Hello everyone, this is Graham Anderson from Four Corners of the Board, and today I'm going to be looking at Master of the Galaxy. Yes, it has a generic name, and yes, the cover art is not over-explanatory, but you know what, it's a game about, surprise surprise, becoming the ruler of the galaxy. Now what intrigued me about this game is the main mechanism of it. That is, you're going to be pulling cubes from a bag and allocating them to different projects in front of you. Now I do like some of the other bag building games out there, so I wanted to see whether this one would live up to the previous ones. Well, let's get it to the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back for my final thoughts on Master of the Galaxy. So here we have Master of the Galaxy set up for three players. Now there are a fair number of rules to this game, so I'm going to keep this as high level as possible. There are seven decks of cards, three development cards, three political decks, and one species deck. Each player will have a bag of their color and puts five cubes of each color in the bag. They will also have five supremacy tokens with their symbol or color on them and nine bases. Their supremacy tokens are placed next to the supremacy board, one for each track. First player is decided randomly, and they will draw a cube out of their bag, and the color matching the solar system will be their home planet, and the board should be rotated so it's beside them. In this example, the first player drew a blue cube, so the blue planet is in front of them. The other players will take their appropriate system as their home systems. Now there are rules for two and three players and where the other players will surround the table, but we'll ignore that for now. Each player will place one of their bases into their home systems. If there are any unused home systems, place a black hole in the system and the two closest systems. Next, the starting player will turn the species deck over and draws a card. Now this is the first interesting mechanism of the game. I should note that once the game is started, all decks will be faced up. Now, whenever you are required to draw a card, you will always take the top two cards from a deck. You will choose either one of the cards from your hand and discard the other one to the bottom of the deck, or discard both of the cards you just drew and take the top card from the deck. In essence, you will always have three cards to choose from when you draw cards. After the start player has selected their species, it goes around the table in player order for each player to select their species. Once this is done, all decks are turned face up. Now the goal of the game is to be the first player to achieve one of the following. Get all of your nine bases out onto the board, get one of your supremacy tokens all the way up to five, or take over another player's home system. Each player will now take their turns in player order, and on their turn, the player will do the following three phases. Gain resources, allocate resources, and finally discard and use your cards from your hand. To gain resources is simple, just draw three cubes from your bag. In the next phase, you're gonna allocate the cubes to different projects. Now the projects can include settling a planet, establishing a route, constructing a space base, receiving a card, implement a development card, steal a resource, fulfill a species agenda, and take part in a conflict. Since this is the heart of the game, I'm going to go through these projects in a little more detail. Now to settle a planet, you will look at the system where you have a space base, and there will be one, two, or three planets around it. Place one of your drawn cubes on one of the planets. If it matches the system color, you're going to take three cubes from the general supply and place them into your bag. Otherwise, you're just going to be getting two cubes. The cubes placed on the planets will remain there for the entire game. They cannot be removed by any manner. Now to establish a trade route, you'll place your cube starting from one of your base systems towards a neutral system. The cube color must match one of the two system colors on the route, and they must all be of the same color. Once the last cube is in place, you can put a constructed base onto it at the end of the phase. Now these cubes are going to stay on the board until you take an action with a black cube, which I'm going to talk about later. Whenever you place a base in a new system, you might gain supremacy. If the arrows are pointing towards the planets, such as here, you will gain a point in that supremacy when you control both sides of this arrow. If the arrows point towards the supremacy symbol, like here, you will only gain this if you control only one side. If you control both systems pointing towards the symbol, you're going to lose a point in that supremacy. Now, to construct a space base, each species card has a way to construct a space base. You're just going to place a cube on the space base project. And you can only have one constructed space base on a card. To receive a card, implement a development card, steal a resource, which is usually available on leader cards, or fulfill a species agenda, again you'll be placing the matching cube on the appropriate project. And finally, if you're involved in a conflict, you can place cubes on active conflicts. Now I'm going to go a little more detail on the conflicts in a little bit. 
Once you have finished allocating your resources, you will assess your completed projects and take the appropriate action. This includes building and placing a space base, drawing a card, or performing an ability or gaining supremacy points from your cards. Now, depending on what type of project you finish, you might return cubes to your bag. But normally, all projects will require you to leave the cubes on the project. But anything with these little arrows means that once this project is complete, you can return those cubes to your bag. Any project that doesn't have that means that those abilities will only take effect while those cubes are there. So, this is where the black cubes come into play. Instead of placing a black cube when drawn from the bag, you can return cubes from any one project, finished or unfinished, to your bag along with a black cube. That's the only way to get cubes off of your projects. Whenever you are removing cubes from a project, if there's a little plus symbol on the card, that means that the cubes will go back to the general supply instead of to your bag. Now the last piece I want to talk about during this phase is combat. Combat can only be initiated with a combat card, and they can be obtained from placing your second base in the system or from implementing a second development card of the same type. These combat cards are placed in the last phase of the game, but I want to talk about them a little bit now. When the cards are placed, there are two sides to them. Whichever side is next to your system is the side that you are filling. But the winner's rewards are printed on the opposite side of the card. You get basically essentially whatever is pointing to your side, not what is printed on your side of the card. And remember, you can never place a combat card and add cubes to it during one turn which is why the placement of these cards is in Phase 3, and not the resource allocation Phase 2. Now, assuming that the combat card is already in play, it's between you and a neighboring system, either a neutral system or a system someone already has a base in. During the resource allocation phase, you can place cubes on your side of the card. Whoever finishes their side first wins the combat. If it is a neutral system, you usually do not get any of the rewards from the other system, as they have no cards or such but you do get the number of cubes printed on the bottom of the general supply. You will also get a point in the supremacy that's shown on the bottom right of the card. If the battle was from another player, you get any rewards from them that are printed on the card, such as cards from their hand or making them discard cards, or you can remove all of their bases from the system and all the resources from the trade routes from that system. If you are able to remove their bases from the system, you can then place one of your unused bases in that system, as it does not require a constructed base or trade route. If you do not place a base there during the resolution of the conflict, then the system becomes a neutral system. Now there is more rules for the combat, but I think that should give you an overview of how it works. The final phase is the use and discard phase. Here you can play any number of combat cards from your hand onto the board. If you place a combat card on a partially built route, remove all the cubes back to the bag. Since your hand size limit is 7 cards, this phase also allows you to discard cards from your hand and some cards even have abilities that are triggered when they are discarded during this phase. Depending on how many cards you discard in this phase, you gain resources of your choice. One card for one resource, two cards gets you three resources, and three or more cards gets you five resources. Once you've done all three phases, play goes to the next player. Now again, the game will end as soon as one player has placed all of their nine planets, or gotten up to five on one of the supremacy tracks, or taken over the starting system of another player. Now again, I've glossed over a fair number of little rules, but I want to cover all the basics. So let's get back to the table to see what I thought about Master of the Galaxy. So let's talk about theme and components. First off, the theme is barely there, and that goes kind of hand in hand with me for the components. From the rules overview, you saw how much was going on, and I did not explain all the rules to you either. Now luckily there are player aids, uh, and the back of the rule book will kind of list all the ways there is to get cards and resources, because it's not intuitive based on the theme. Now there are three political cards. The uh, leader cards, which you get after placing your first space base in a solar system or implementing the first card of a certain color. Then you get the conflicts for doing the second base base or the second card of a color and the government cards, which you get for placing your third base or implementing the third card of a certain color. But why though? It doesn't make any thematic sense, which is why having that rule book and the player aids is very uh, useful. And uh, another part with graphical design, the leader cards are different from all the rest of the cards and I had to keep on reminding people how these things work. Uh, leader cards have a supremacy requirement on the left hand side of the card here. So you must have at least one point in each of these supremacy tracks before you can use the text across the bottom of your leader card. But the steal ability is always in effect. So the components themselves, uh, they're good quality. I like that there's three different types of space bases, and you know what, the cards themselves are good quality, as is the, the art on them. 
So what about the gameplay itself? Well, things, this is where things kind of get even more interesting as there are good and bad parts, fun and not so fun parts. Now the pulling of the cubes is a fun mechanism and I enjoyed that. And if you have the right cards implemented, you can mitigate some of your draws. But at the beginning of the game, the randomness can be a little annoying as you're waiting to finish off a project. And sometimes, you know what, you just end up drawing cubes you can't use. Now I did enjoy the black cube mechanism as that's the only way to get your cubes off of a project. But again, at the beginning of the game, these are mostly useless to you. But later in the game, you're going to need these cubes to get your kind of cubes back into your bag, to kind of reseed your bag with the stuff that's on your projects. But again, beginning of the game, they're useless. You throw them back in the bag. Now, the political cards are fairly important, as you kind of need to decide early on which way you want to try and one uh, early in the game. And you want to start building your bag for those purposes. And getting your government cards, these black cards for building the third base or get your third implement uh, card, is very important. These things are very powerful and they'll kind of give you a good way to go. Like for example, uh, monarchy is good if you want to attack. Now, I must say that we made a house rule for drawing cubes. We decided to say you draw the cubes at the end of your turn and keep them hidden from other players so you can pre-plan. Later in the game when you have all these different cards implemented that can alter how you draw and what cubes you can draw and now it can become cumbersome for the active player to kind of assess the cubes that they're drawing and all the cards at the beginning of the turn. Now once we kind of made that little house rule, Turns went very quickly, which was nice, until someone had to draw a card. Then the play stops while they decide on which card they can take, and that can take some time. Now people can see the top cards of each deck, but they don't know what's underneath until they draw the cards. Then they draw the cards and they have to decide which one they want to play, or uh, sorry, to get. So that stopped the game sometimes. And as you saw from the overview, the concept of the game is fairly simple. Draw cubes from your bag, allocate them to your projects, and see what's finished. But there are so many little rules that got in the way. For example, when you implement a card, you get to move up with the supremacy track, which means uh, you may be able to use some of your leader's abilities. But the steal ability on the leader card is not tied to the supremacy rules. When someone steals one of your cubes from a finished project, does it affect your supremacy and does that affect your leader cards? It just became a point when you kind of have to stop every once in a while and kind of reassess your things and say, oh, I, I forgot to do this or I've been meaning to do this. There is a fair bit of randomness in the game, but setting yourself up to mitigate that randomness actually is possible. Getting a species card that works for the resources of your home system is a must. And using some of the cards to swap out color cubes you no longer need is also good planning as well. In all the games that I have played though, the end of the game comes down to who can pull the right cubes at the right time. And I've played with two, three, and four players, and I must say four players is the way to go, as all three win conditions seem to be played at the same time. But it's, you get near the end of the game and it's, oh, I need to pull that one cube. I need to pull that one cube. Oh, you drew your one cube first, you won the game. So with all that being said, would I recommend this game? For me, it's got some good points and some bad points. So I don't think I can recommend this outright that you rush out and buy the game. But I do think that if it sounds interesting at all, it is worth a play before you make your decision. For me, it was not a great game, but it wasn't terrible either. It had some really good moments but from some frustrating ones as well. And really that's all I can say for the moment. So until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.